Built on the River Thames in 1078 by King William the Conqueror, the Tower of London was created with the objective of instilling fear in those who saw it, as a display of the new might and power that ruled the land following the Norman conquest of England. The initial building, the iconic White Tower, was later expanded, more buildings were erected and two curtain walls and a moat were added. The complex served many purposes throughout the centuries, being used as a royal residence and palace, as a prison, hosting the mint and protecting the crown jewels. In its long life, the ground on which it sits, the stones, the very fabric that composes the building itself were stained by massive amounts of blood and witnessed anger, loneliness, fear, pain, agony. It is understandable that a place with such history boasts a great number of ghosts and is considered to be one of the most haunted buildings in the UK. Together, we shall encounter six of its female ghostly inhabitants. Here are the six scariest female ghosts that dwell in the Tower of London. Number six, the Grey Lady. If you visit the Queen's house, you might come across the ghost of the Grey Lady. She is known to manifest in the royal apartment and is normally seen as a greyish evanescent mist. However, she tends to be picky in her manifestations, showing herself only to female visitors. Number 5. The White Lady The White Lady is a bit more sociable than her grey colleague, showing herself to men and women alike. She was once seen waving to some children from a window and is known to haunt the White Tower. If you visit the imposing building, you may smell a strong, pungent, overwhelming scent of old cheap perfume, which has reportedly caused both visitors and guards alike to feel sick. This is the White Lady announcing her presence. You may then feel a gentle tap on your shoulder, but no one will be there when you turn, just a fleeting glimpse of something white that you will see with the corner of your eye. Number 4. Arbella Stewart Arbella Stewart was fourth in line to the throne. When Arbella secretly married William Seymour, nephew of Lady Jane Grey, in 1610, King James I was furious. He felt this marriage represented a threat to his throne and an insult since it took place without his approval. He had the couple imprisoned in two separate locations. The couple managed to communicate to each other through letters and messages until the king found out and ordered for Arbella to be moved to another location. Arbella pretended to be sick and hatched a plan with William to escape to France. She dressed as a man and managed to leave, but William's arrival at the rendezvous was delayed. She was forced to embark alone in the ship they were meant to sail upon together, but was recognized and recaptured. William instead took the following ship and made it to France. Arbella was imprisoned once more, this time in the Queen's house in the Tower of London. She died there on September the 27th, 1615, at the age of 45. There are many rumors about her death, some say she went insane, some say she stopped eating and let herself die of starvation, some say she was murdered. She was buried alongside Mary Queen of Scots in Westminster Abbey. Her ghost is said to wander the hallways and the rooms of the Tower of London. Women who have slept in the Lennox room, where she was reportedly held captive, have reported waking up in the middle of the night with a terrible feeling of being strangled. In 1994, the wife of the resident governor of the Tower of London experienced this hostility for herself. She was making the bed when she felt a hard push as if someone was trying to push her out of the room. The governor decided to set the rule not to let any woman enter the Lennox room. Why does Arbella dislike female guests so much, in your opinion? 
Number three, Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Day Queen. Lady Jane Grey is also known as the Nine Day Queen, and that is for a good reason. Her reign lasted only nine days. She was just a teenager when she became a pawn in a game of power. She represented an Anglican alternative to Catholic Mary Tudor, and as such she was pushed on the throne by her ambitious father-in-law. To avoid Mary becoming queen, the plotters tried to convince the English that Jane was the one true heir, but to no avail. The public supported Mary, who was crowned queen after marrying Philip of Spain. Mary saw young Jane and her husband, Lord Guilford Dudley, as a potential threat, and so locked them both in the Tower of London and sentenced the couple to be beheaded. On the 12th of February 1554, young Jane watched from the window of her cell as her young husband was led to the scaffold in tears and was beheaded. She followed his grisly fate just a few hours later. She was barely 17 when she was killed. The spot of her death has now become a tourist attraction and one of the most photographed spots in the Tower of London. Her lonely, disconsolate soul can still be seen, especially on the anniversary of her execution. She appears as a bright white figure which floats forth from the gloomy mists of the Thames and walks around the green, sadly reliving her last moments on earth. She is also seen wandering the battlements and then gently fading away. Number two, Margaret Paul. Margaret Paul, Countess of Salisbury, was 72 at the time of her death on the 27th of May, 1541. Her only guilt was being the mother of Cardinal Paul. From his safe haven in France, the Cardinal had vilified King Harry VIII's claim as head of the Church of England. Not being able to unleash his wrath towards the Cardinal, safely tucked away in France, the king turned his petty, savage vengeance towards his mother, Margaret Paul. She was arrested in November 1538 and locked in the tower for over two years. She was told she was going to die just an hour before her execution. She was taken to the scaffold to be beheaded, but when the executioner asked her to kneel and place her head on the block, she refused, staring defiantly at the man and saying, So should traitors do and I am none. The executioner raised his axe and swung it towards the old lady, who tried to run away. The executioner chased Margaret around the scaffold, hacking and hacking at the poor lady until she, mangled, eventually bled to death. Such was the trauma endured by Margaret, by those present, by the very fabric of those same walls that the bloody scene is replayed over and over again at the anniversary of her gruesome and gory death, her blood-curdling screams being heard while she is chased and hacked into pieces by a ghostly executioner for eternity. Number 1. Anne Boleyn Anne was the second wife of King Henry VIII. Together with the inability of the first wife, Catherine of Aragon, to provide a male heir, she was the reason behind the separation of the Church of England from the Church of Rome. She was also the king's first wife to be executed. Also unable to give the king a male heir, and possibly also because of her difficult character, she lost the king's favour. With the arrival of King Henry's new mistress, Jane Seymour, Anne had to be gotten rid of. She was accused of adultery, treason and witchcraft, and imprisoned in the Tower of London. Upon trial, she was sentenced to be burned, but the king commuted her sentence to beheading. The king hired the best swordsman from France, who on May 19, 1536, took her life with a single stroke. She is the most famous, but also one of the most active ghosts of the tower. She can be spotted both pacing on the tower green and wandering inside the buildings. Sometimes she is spotted as a complete figure, other times, she is seen headless. She can also be found in the chapel of St. Peter, where her earthly remains were first buried. A sentry guarding the Queen's house had a frightful meeting with Anne in 1864. He was standing guard when he saw a female figure approaching. 
She was veiled in mist and wore a Tudor dress and a French hood. But where her face was meant to be, there was nothing. The man yelled at the figure to stop, but the ghostly figure continued to get closer and closer. In a fit of panic, the soldier thrust his bayonet at the figure, but the blade, meeting no flesh, went right through the female apparition. The terrified sentry couldn't believe his eyes and fainted from the fright. When he awoke, he was in trouble. He had been accused of sleeping while well on duty and was going to be court-martialed. However, many other soldiers came forward and stated that they too had seen the faceless apparition on the Tower Green that night. An officer swore that he saw the event taking place from a window in the bloody tower. He had looked out when he had heard the soldier yell, only to see the apparition go through the bayonet and through the poor soldier who then lost his senses to fear. The soldier was let off. Not long after, one night, while on patrol around the tower, a captain saw an odd flickering light coming from the chapel of St. Peter. He went over and climbed to one of the windows, only to witness a unique spectacle. Inside the chapel was a procession of knights in armor, lords and ladies. At the center of these figures was a small woman standing, which she identified from paintings of Anne Boleyn he had seen. He remained mesmerized by the scene, and after some minutes the light and the procession faded away, leaving before his eyes only an empty dark church. The chapel of St. Peter at Vincula is where Anne was first laid to rest, after her head was severed from her body. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel for more spooky videos?